Hello students, this is Professor Vincent Osaya. Welcome to my class. This is part two of chapter 16 presentation. Chapter 16, Dilutive Securities and Earnings Per Share. Now, in chapter one, we talk about the overview of the whole chapter extensively. Now here in part two, let's go ahead and roll up our sleeves and uh, dive into some of the issues in details. Now, so we are going to talk about uh, the first objective and uh, we are going to describe the accounting for the issuance, uh, uh, conversion and retirement of uh, convertible uh, securities. So, moving along, dilutive securities. We already talked about dilutive securities as those uh, financial securities that have the potential to dilute EPS or any per share. Now, we said that uh, the dilutive securities could be debt, uh, financial security or equity financial security. What does that mean? Now, let's take a look at the balance sheet. On the balance sheet, we have assets, liability, stockholders, equity. Now, take a look at this very carefully. If a company has $100 million in total assets, the $100 million uh, uh, comes from two sources. Clearly, either from liability or stockholders' equity or combination. So if we have uh, $10 million here in uh, the liability, clearly we have uh, $90 million in stockholders equity. Of course, as you know, the accounting equation, assets is equal to liabilities plus stockholders uh, equity. So here we are saying that the investors or creditors uh, are, are in, uh, invested $10 million of the $100 million of the company's total assets, while the owners of the company or stockholders are, are contributed $90 million of the $100 million uh, 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 dollars in total assets, or they have claim. Uh, uh, they have ninety million dollars claim, and their creditors have a uh, 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 ten million dollars uh, claim. The the point that I'm trying to get across is here we have debt, here we have equity. It doesn't go more than that. So the dilutive security that we are talking about, uh, 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 a dilutive security is either a debt security or equity security, all right? So uh, let's zero in on some of the examples that we have here. Now we said that some companies will report these financial instruments as liability or equity. In other words, as debt or equity. So here are some of the examples. Stock options, convertible securities, preferred stock. So these are different examples of uh, dilutive uh, 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 securities and uh, 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 be it debt or equity. So of course, preferred stock clearly uh, is uh, an uh, uh, equity uh, uh, security, while convertible securities like bond is a debt uh, security. So moving along, let's talk about the accounting for convertible, uh, 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 for con convertible debt. An example of a convertible debt is convertible bond or bonds and we said that they can be changed into other corporate security during some specified period of time after issuance so we just talked about that now here are the benefits to the bondholder so if you buy a convertible debt a bond that means the bond has a feature that allows you to convert it to common stock when the time is right for your own benefit so from that standpoint uh, 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 for the issuing company, uh, excuse me, for the bondholder, it guarantees the convertible bond guarantees you interest. Of course, you are going to receive two types of cash flows uh, from the issuing company. That is the interest and the uh, principal. So, benefit of a bond. Guarantee interest and principal for the bondholder, plus it also gives you the privilege of exchanging the bond for stock. So those are the two primary benefits for the bondholder. Now, moving along, let's take a look at two main reasons why corporations will issue convertible uh, uh, debt. To raise capital, uh, to raise equity, okay, uh, capital without giving up more ownership control than necessary. Meaning, convertible bond you are really not giving ownership yet until they are actually converted. So by so doing, you are not giving 
uh, up more ownership, but at the same time, you are able to raise a, a equity capital. Number two, obtain debt financing at cheaper rate. Usually, uh, 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 that is the case. So the accounting for convertible debt involves reporting issues at the time of issuance, conversion, and retirement. What are we talking about here? By the time we issue the convertible bond, how do we account for it? How do we record it at issuance? Number two, when those bonds are converted to common store, how do we record it? And number three, when they are retired, what is the accounting treatment? So those are the three issues. So now let's take a look at the first one, at time of issuance. Now we are not going to spend too much time on this because we talk about this extensively in chapter 14. Remember chapter 14 deals with uh, uh, long-term liabilities. So, uh, 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 so we use, uh, we recognize the discount or premium, uh, amortize it over the life of the term, uh, 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 as discussed extensively in chapter uh, 14. So moving along, uh, nevertheless, let's take a look at uh, uh, an illustration of accounting for convertible bond. So M Corporation issued $4 million per value, 7% convertible bonds at 99 for, for cash. If the bonds have not included the conversion feature, they would have sold for 95. Record the entry at date of issuance. So in other words, <clears throat> without the uh, 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 conversion feature, the bond would have sold for 95. But we were able to sell the bond uh, for 99, uh, uh, 99, meaning 99%. So let's take a look at what happened. So the issuing company received 4 million multiplied by 99%, that will give you 3.9 million. So they received cash for $3.9 million. The discount on bond payable uh, is uh, $40,000. So with debit discount on bond payable, clearly bond payable is credited for $4 million. This shouldn't be a problem because we talk about this, like I said, extensively in chapter 14. Now let's take a look at, at time of issuance. So what is the accounting treatment at time? There is a typo here. I just want to bring this to your attention. This is not a time of uh, issuance. It is time of conversion. All right, so there's a typo. So now by the time we convert it, what do we do? So companies use book value method when converting the bond. Here are the rules that you need to know. When the debt holder converts the debt to equity, the issuing company recognizes no gain or loss of upon conversion. So you just have to understand uh, these rules. So let's take a look at uh, an illustration of that. So M Company House outstanding $1,000 bond, each convertible into 50 shares of $10 per value common stock. The bonds are converted on December 31st, 2014 when the unamortized discount is 30,000 and the market price of the stock is $21 per share. So we have to prepare the entry to record the conversion of the bond. In other words, how do we account for the conversion of the bond? So clearly, you might like, a, like a, a, I encourage you Zero in on those extremely easy entries, the ones that are very obvious. So we have $2,000, $1,000 bond. So if you do the math, that is $2 million. So when the bond was, when the bonds were issued, clearly we credit bond payable for $2 million since we are converting these bonds, or since these bonds are being converted to common stock, bond payable account has to be debited. We have to not get rid of them in our books. Has to be debited for two million. So the first entry and the easiest is bond payable. We need to debit it for two million dollars. Now the unamortized discount obviously has a, uh, a, a debit uh, balance. So to get rid of the related unamortized discount account, we need to credit it. So here we are told that the unamortized discount is 30,000, so we credit it for 30,000. Now, how many uh, common stock did we uh, issue when the bonds were converted? 2,000 we are told, okay? Now, uh, uh, each bond, is convertible into 50 shares, excuse me, 50 shares of 
dollars per value common stock. So the com so we are talking about common stock and the par value is ten dollars. So remember, we said that common stock account is always credited. Par value common stock account is always credited based on the number of shares issue multiplied by the par value. So in this case, uh, two thousand uh, bonds multiplied by fifty shares because each is convertible into fifty shares multiplied by ten dollars par value. So we have a million dollars. So we credit common stock for a million dollars. Clearly, the difference of $970,000 is credited to paid in capital in excess of par. So that is the accounting for convertible uh, uh, debt. Now let's take a look at the uh, induced conversion. What does that mean? This is a situation whereby the issuing company gives an incentive for the bondholder to convert uh, the bond. So we call that induced conversion. In other words, just like you have a... Uh, uh, example that comes to my mind is induced labor. You know, uh, 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 I mean, uh, having a lady to put to bed before the actual due date. Uh, I don't know why I came up with that example. Anyhow, uh, moving along, let's take a look at uh, how that works. Illustration: the same, uh, the same. Uh, uh, illustration that we just uh, talked about. The only difference here is uh, seventy thousand dollars was given by the bond by the issuing company as an incentive to convert. So when that does happen, look at the last entry here. So we debit debt conversion expense that becomes an expense, and we credit the cash for seventy thousand uh, dollars. So moving along, let's take a look at retirement of a convertible bond. Here are the related rules. Recognize same as retiring debt that is not convertible. We talk about this also in chapter 14. The difference between the cash acquisition price and current amount should be reported as gain or loss in the income statement. So here you have it for the related rules. Now, let's take a look at the objective two. Let's talk about how to account for a convertible preferred stock. So we just talked about how to account or record convertible bonds. And as you know, bonds are what? Debt security. Now we are talking about convertible preferred stock. So uh, this is a preferred stock or these are preferred stock that have convertible features. So you are able to convert them. Uh, the bond, excuse me, the stockholder is able to convert preferred stock to common stockholder. Now, here are the rules. Uh, you classify as part of stockholder equity. We talk, we talk about that. In other words, preferred stock uh, is usually reported as part of uh, equity, all right? Unless mandatory redemption exists. No theoretical justification for recognizing a gain or loss when exercised. In other words, there's no point of uh, recognizing a gain or a loss here because the preferred stockholders are, are still uh, 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 owners or they have equity of the company. So, uh, like uh, we said earlier, the companies cannot recognize gain or loss when they deal with themselves. So let's take a look at uh, an illustration here. This is very simple. Uh, 2,000 shares of $10 per value common stock, conversion of 1,000 shares of 50 per value, per value preferred stock. The preferred stock was originally issued at 60 per share. The common stock is trading at 26 per share at the time of conversion. Prefer the entry to record the conversion. Again, like I encourage you to do, the, one of the first things that you need to do is to zero in on those entries that are, are the easiest of those entries. So here, 2,000 shares of $10 per common stock upon conversion of 1,000 shares of $50 per value preferred stock. So originally, preferred stock, when the preferred stock we are issued originally preferred stock account was credited based on the number of preferred stock issue multiplied by power value because this is a power value preferred stock. So in that in, in such circumstance, 1,000 shares of preferred stock multiplied by $50 per value clearly will give you $50,000. Therefore, 
prepare stock needs to be debited now by fifty thousand dollars in order to get rid of it. The related paid in capital in excess of part of ten thousand relative to the one thousand prepared stock has to be debited because, because as you know, the paid in capital in excess of power was originally credited when they were issued. Now we need to get rid of it, okay? So uh, and that, would, of course, uh, originally we issued for $60 per share and the power value is uh, $50. So we issued those preferred stock for $10 more than the power value. So the $10 uh, uh, multiplied by the 1,000 shares uh, will give you uh, 10,000. So, paid in capital in excess of power preferred stock is uh, debited for 10,000. Of course, how many uh, uh, shares of common stock are we issuing? 2,000 uh, and, uh, and uh, 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 multiplied by $10 because the common stock has a $10 power value for 20,000. The difference of 40,000 is credited to paid in capital in excess of power. Moving along, let's take a look at uh, objective three. I think this would be a good cutoff point for uh, part two of this presentation. 